Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. It's a new prescription for a new you, America. Let's kick it off and go with Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Sure, do. About a month ago, oh, okay. My, about a month ago, my mom had a um, a lesion show up on her lower abdomen. It was slightly whitish in color, very, very itchy. After dealing with that um, for about a month, she went to the doctor. They did a biopsy, and the biopsy results came back a lichen simplex cronius or a lichen sclerosis type lesion. Sure. Uh, they they di- they gave her a. Um, an ointment to use, which is a topical steroidal treatment. But anything with steroids, she's severely allergic to, and it caused severe burning, et cetera. So the doctor has now referred her to a dermatologist. So what we were wondering is, is, is there anything that could be naturally treated for this so she doesn't have to go to medic- the medication route? There is. I mean, the, the medication they would use wouldn't be wouldn't be too rigorous on her, but I, there are natural things she could try if she wanted to. Uh, wormwood is really good, and black walnut. And black walnut can be taken typically on an everyday basis, but wormwood is something you got to kind of cycle on and off. I mean, what I mean by that is you would take it maybe 14 days on, seven days off in a rotation like that. And most health food stores have that. But, you know, those are two options that are available. They're really good antifungal. They're really good for... Uh, kind of an anti-parasitic type natural supplement to take. So that, those are a couple of things you could you could consider and you could and that she could think about. But again, probiotics are good too. There's a lot she's got to do to clear the gut out. The the gut is going to be really important to keep the flora and all that kind of jazz in the digestive tract healthy while she's looking to clear that up. But yeah, that that is something that you would she would want to if she wanted to go natural. You would give it maybe three weeks or so, and if she doesn't see any improvement, uh-huh. again, wanting to go the natural route, then she's going to want to go to the medication. Okay. Because well, when the biopsy results came back, it didn't show any uh, fungus. Oh, it didn't show anything. It didn't show any fungus, but it did. It, it came back a, a lichen um, lesion. Right. Like it's still lesion. A, right. So but I'm the same, a little bit confused with that. Okay. Well, the thing is. With lichen, you you have to treat it in the same way. Now, when I say treat it, I don't mean like treat the disease. What I'm saying is if you go to a health food store, then the folks that, that work there, they'll be able to talk to you all about the details of how they work in general. But, I mean, those are some good options. And if it was me, that's the route I would go. I mean, that's that's what I've seen many, many times. But has she done anything yet, or she's just kind of holding tight and waiting? Well, um, the itching is what's really bothering her. Regarding uh, you know this uh, lesion that has shown up, um, but she has tried um, silvadine cream, yeah. just that had treated a burn before, right. and it seems to have really helped. But there's still some itching left, has and she... we didn't know like what causes this. Well, the the it, the itching and all that is caused by what's going on in her digestive tract. That's bottom line. Has she has she changed her diet at all during this? Um. She really hasn't changed the diet, not at all. Okay. Have her, one thing that can help when, when somebody's trying to clear this out of the body is to come off of all the wheat. So maybe if she decreased that out of her diet, that can be very helpful. Also, cow's milk dairy, which the casein protein in cow's milk, whether it's yogurt, cheese, or the live milk itself, can be a big player as far as increasing the skin and inflammation on the skin. So cutting out those food groups may be very helpful as well. And then you can look at the supplements and combine those together and, and that might be helpful. But I would, as far as your physician goes and what they're, they're telling her, if, if she wants to go that route and she doesn't get good results with the things we just talked about, then of course the medication is going to help quite a bit. The medication should help quite a bit just to be as far as getting her kind of where she needs to be and the itching. I mean, they may even do things like, or suggest something like cortisone, which again, that's going to be that's just going to cut down inflammation and cut down the itching and be more of a band-aid to help her but those natural things can be very helpful for the long run sometimes it works though sometimes it doesn't everyone's different when you're looking at those Sandra so I hope that helps keep me posted you can always send me an email triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two that's triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two FDA is warning now 
there's a possible infant seizure risk from a flu vaccine. Now, news alert from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration suggests that some infants may be at risk of febrile seizures following administration of the Pasteur's flu zone vaccine, which has been recommended for children aged 6 to 23 months. And both the FDA and Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta are investigating whether or not recent reported febrile seizures in young adult, or I'm sorry, in young children following the flu vaccination are related to the vaccine itself or had some other cause. Now, a febrile seizure is a seizure related to a fever or exceedingly high body temperature and can result from many common childhood illnesses, including flu, cold, ear infections, and sometimes following administration of vaccines. The seizures typically last only a moment or two and are not dangerous, but they can be alarming to parents and caregivers. The Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System had noted 42 cases of febrile seizure following the flu zone vaccination. The FDA has not seen an increase in the reports, people older than two years of age, FDA spokeswoman Shelley Burgess told AOL Health, now approximately one in 25 young children will have at least one febrile seizure, usually between six months and five years of age. Burgess adds that the peak age for the seizures are between 18 and 24 months and reemphasize that the seizures are not serious and generally only last a minute or two. She said there's not yet clear link between the flu zone vaccine and the seizures, but that FDA and the CDC are still investigating. So a lot going on with seizures and a lot going on with kids today and the vaccines. It's, it's, it's a big controversy of whether or not to vaccinate your kids. And I always say, because people ask me this all the time, and they want to know my opinion. My opinion is that, first of all, it's between the parent and the child and the physician. And you just need to do your research and make your own decision. Now, are vaccines good or are they bad? Well, there's benef- there, there's a case for both. And in some cases, the vaccines are very, very good. And obviously, that's why we have them, because they can be very protective to the body. But in the past, we've known there have been some chemicals in there like mercury and things that people have been concerned about. So you just have to do your own research. They're not meant to harm you, but you have to make a decision whether you want that for your child or not. So do the research, do the study. Don't just take my thoughts or a physician's thought like your, your pediatrician just because they say you should do it. Do your own research so you can make your own educated decision. right back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. This is the best in healthy talk radio you want to send me an email, I'd be glad to make it part of the show. But what are you doing right now to make your health really great? Have you made some new resolutions? That's not the deal. The deal is some set some goals for yourself to make sure that you're getting into a place where you're ready to make those extra new steps to drop five or 10 pounds or to do things to, to make your mental clarity better, to eat a better diet, to exercise more, to get better rest going to bed a little bit earlier each night so that your hormones and things can kick in and they re- can recover and it can help your body function at a higher level. In my book, Empowering Your Health, I talk a lot about all these different kind of things and it's a real good roadmap really for health from A to Z 
how to go from where you are in your current state of health to where you need to be. And right now, we're going to kick it off and go with Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the show, darling. How can I help? Yes, I would just like some advice on how I could lose some weight. (laughs) How much weight do you want to lose, Sarah? At least 50 pounds. All right, 50 pounds. That's doable. So you, I, mm-hmm. let me, I, I take it that you come to a place where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you're ready to make a change. Is that right? Right. Okay. My Let's talk. Job requires, I, I don't do the walking like I did when I worked in nursing. Okay. So I put some pounds on. <laughs> All right. That's okay. But know this, okay. know that to, to lose 50 pounds, there has to be uh-huh. a, a major lifestyle overhaul with, uh-huh. with you. And that's that's right. really important. So as long as you know that up front, then you should be good to go. And that's where we're going to start. Okay. So first things first, and we're going to go through the daily prescriptions that I always talk about. So prescription number one is always, always to make sure that you decide that you want to get well and you want to follow the anti-inflammatory diet. That's the one in my book, Empowering Your Health, because that's going to cut down on inflammation. It's going to lay the foundation for what you do to get your body to drop the weight, to lower inflammation, and to put the right kind of nutrients in the body. Those lean quality proteins like chicken, fish, beaver, eggs, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and the good healthy fats, omega-3s, 6s, and 9s, like almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados, all that kind of stuff. It's very good. So that's step one. Now, two, prescription number two is always, 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 you want to make sure that you're taking the foundational four supplements. These are the four things that you don't get in our normal food supply. And you can get them anywhere, health food store, you can go to the different websites. And there's a lot of places that carry them. But it, here's the four things that really everybody should really take, kids and, and adults, that, that we just don't get in our food supply. So number one is a good whole food multivitamin. Then digestive enzymes to help break our food down because our soil is so depleted. And because our soil is so depleted, it doesn't matter how organic the food is, we're still lacking the enzymes that we really need to break our foods down. And that's why digestive enzymes are very good to an already good diet that you should be following. And the number three, cod liver oil or a good fish oil, it has vitamin A, vitamin D, and omega-3 fatty acids, which we all need. And then probiotics. Probiotics put the good bacteria back in our digestive tract. And we've taken antibiotics for so long, it's kind of wiped out all the bacteria. And the good bacteria needs to be in there for our body to function at a very high level. And so the probiotics, they do that very thing. They put the good bacteria back in so your immune system can be stronger, so that your elimination of toxins, bowel movements, and all that can be much better. And it sets you up just to win, which that's what this whole thing is all about. So that can be very good too. Now, Scripture number three, as we talk about, is getting your blood work done with your primary care physician. You want to make sure you get blood work done at least every six months with your primary care, whether you have current health challenges that you're taking medications for, or if you're just looking at it from more of a wellness perspective, the blood changes every 90 to 120 days. Blood work is the cornerstone of figuring out what's going on with our health. It's been the gold standard in healthcare for so long, and it's critical for you to continue to do that and work with your doctor and make sure you get those numbers and make sure everything's all doing well within your body. Number four of the prescriptions that we talk about is to make sure you get plenty of water. Now, the kind of the old adage is you want half your body weight in ounces of pure non-chlorinated water each and every day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, then you want to shoot for 75 ounces of water a day. So that's always a good way to go. Number five is the exercise. Exercise five days a week, 30 minutes a day, doing something you enjoy, and it doesn't matter. But listen, here's the deal. No excuses. It doesn't matter if it's snowing outside, raining outside, whatever. You got to make it happen. If you can't get to a gym and you don't have a treadmill at home or a bicycle at home, then you have some videos, have some backup, have some things that you know you can get a 30-minute workout in that day And get the body moving so you can stay on target and stay on track. Keep your body where it needs to be. And then don't forget that number six is rest. Rest is so important. Now, it doesn't mean just sleeping all the time, but you need to have a good day of rest. Rest your mind, rest your body. And the sleep we get at night along with that rest is critical. You want to be in bed by at least 11 p.m. your time, whatever your time zone is. Because the body's on a circadian rhythm. 
And every minute of sleep we get before midnight is worth about four minutes after midnight. And that is critical for all of our hormones to function properly, for our body to recover, to regenerate, to be ready for the next day. So our cortisol levels, DHEA levels, our adrenal glands are working better. I could just go on and on and on about how powerful sleep is. But it is, and it's something that we need to focus on on a regular basis. So that's daily prescription number six. And number seven is have a very good, trusted primary care physician that you really believe in and that believes in you, that you're not scared or intimidated by, that you can go up and lay things out for them about how to get your body healthier, and they'll listen to you. If you want to try natural things, they'll listen to you. If you want to lower medications, they'll work with you. So they're there to guide you. They're not there to lord over you. There's a big difference, and you want to make sure you find someone that you can trust in that arena. Get a blood test, though, done for leptin. Leptin is a big marker for losing weight and fat loss. Make sure they're checking your thyroid gland and a host of other growth hormone, pituitary gland. The list goes on and on. You just want to get with a good doctor that can check plenty of blood work and figure out exactly where your body is so you can come up with a game plan. But follow those prescriptions. Those are some good basic foundational principles to help you get to the goals that you're looking for. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. Triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Great information for your health and for your life. There, you can sign up for our Facebook and Twitter. You can also join there. Links to get you over in the social media world. All kinds of specials too. What are you struggling with? You want to talk about your health? We want to talk about it with you. And the amazing thing is, is our health really is our greatest wealth. And when you talk to people, there's everything going on within their lives, and it's amazing with the stress and with family and with work responsibilities. And we tend to let our health kind of fall to the bottom of the, the pile. And we end up not taking care of it for a period of time until maybe you get into your late 40s or something and something begins to break down. And then, of course, you're having symptoms. And then, of course, you go to your doctor and then the big red flag goes up and you're like, oh, my goodness, now I've got diabetes. Now I've got high blood pressure. Now I have high cholesterol. And you're like, well, how did this happen? What do I do? And there's a lot of things you can do. And on this show, that's what we want to do. We want to empower you to make good decisions, empower you with information, and empower you and equip you so that you can live the life and the freedom that you deserve because you do deserve to live in great health. And if you can make good decisions so that your body can regenerate every single day, new cells can form, old cells can go away, the bad cells can die off, and the new cells form, then you can get a brand new body in so many ways and start functioning at a high level. And just know this, there's always hope to get your health back and there's always hope to maintain and attain the extraordinary health that we always talk about here on the show. Right now, we're going to go to Rex. Hi, Rex. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Uh, with your last caller there, I've already uh, received a lot of information about the uh, question I was about to ask you. Anyway, long story okay. short. Yeah, go ahead. I'm a 62-year-old white male. Uh, that retired from the military in 1994. And when oh, I retired wow. from the military, I weighed 225 pounds. Okay. And since that time, I've picked up about 50 pounds. And I've been mm. seeing the same primary care provider uh, for about the last se 17 years. And um, I finally, he wasn't pushing me on my weight, but I finally had a serious discussion with him. And basically, he told me, he said, well, you've been gaining three pounds a year uh, since your military retirement. And he said, if you keep that up, you know, it's not good. So, and uh, I walk about uh, four and a half miles, uh, about five days a week, and I do the body, uh, the body blade. I don't know if you know anything about the body blade, but it's a, it's a great tool to, to flex and stress muscles. And uh, that's right. But the second week I went back, they did a ketosis 
uh, exam of my urine, to det- and they said that my ketosis state was too high, that I needed to drink more fluid. And then they upped my calorie count to 1150 with 25 carbohydrates. Uh, the 25 carbohydrates killed me. I wasn't feeling good. Uh, I wasn't having uh, regular bowel movements. Yeah, that so. Happen. So when I went back this time, they uh, they up my uh, carbohydrates to 40, and they up my calories to 1,200. I feel so much better, but what they told me was not to expect to lose, and they wanted me to lose about four pounds a week. They said, you're probably not going to lose four pounds a week, but you should lose at least two pounds a week. And uh, I don't think I'm going to have a problem doing that, but my question is, you know, how much more can my body toler- tolerate? You know, that's my that's my concern. Tolerate as far as the amount of calories you can eat, or tolerate as yeah, far as weight keep loss. Yeah, this program up. I mean, you know, twelve hundred calories a day at forty carbs. Uh, you know, that's a pretty aggressive program. And I don't know, medically speaking, you know, how long should I keep that up? I mean, it's not going to be a you know forever and ever type thing. The body won't sustain it. I don't think. And I know that my eating habits have to change for the rest of my life. I accept that. But, uh, you know, I feel so much better now on a 1,200 calorie and 40 carbohydrates. And sometimes, you know, I may hit 50 carbohydrates a day. But I can stay under the 1,200 easily. And uh, I just wanted to know what, what, what your, you know, medically speaking, is that the well, thing that, to do? To, or, well, or, I think that you've got good medical. You know what I'm saying? At some point, i gotta, yeah. I got to quit focusing on losing the weight. From a medical, let me stop you right there. From a medical perspective, it sounds like you've got a good team, so they they've got you covered on that end. If you're asking my thoughts, I think that as far as forty carbohydrates, I think counting the carbohydrates, you don't want to get too too much hung up on that. It's because what's going to happen is you don't want your life to be run by that. But you you know portion sizes and that sort of thing. I think for the longer term is going to be good. You've already dropped twenty one pounds. That's great. I mean, what is your goal? How many? How many? How much more weight do you want to drop? Yeah. My question is, do you think forty carbohydrates is unrealistic? I think for the short term it would be okay, but I think for the long term it's 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 too low because your your brain functions on glucose, and the reason you don't feel good a lot of and your body now. You, your body has a process called gluconeogenesis where it will, when you go into ketosis, it will use other things like proteins and it will turn the proteins into glucose for your brain to be able to function. So your body has its own self-preservation mechanism in there to make that happen. But as far as 40 carbohydrates for the long term, I think that's too low. I and mean, that's my thought. Again, you got to go with what your, you, you know, the team you've kind of hired, so to speak, that's that's helping you through that. But that's why I wrote, when I wrote my book, empowering your health, that's why I put in there with the anti-inflammatory diet. I believe in, and from what we've seen, the research I've done that when everything's equal, equal amounts of lean proteins and low glycemic carbs and the healthy fats, when you're eating those in a combination ratio, meaning that you're not eating a ton of protein and just a little bit of carbohydrate, everything's in balance. When you do that, the weight loss, usually on average, if somebody really needs to lose weight, usually the weight loss is usually around 20, usually about 28 pounds to 30 pounds in a 90-day, well, 30, about a 60-day period. And that's, and of course, results vary. That is true. But at the same time, the body can, the body's pretty amazing in how it responds, but it always wants to be in balance. So, Granted, you didn't gain a bunch of weight because you weren't eating. You gained a bunch of weight. You gained a bunch of weight because you were eating, and so your habits need to change, just like you talked about. But it's it's how they change. So I guess what I'm saying, long story short, when you cut down your calories, that's one thing. But then when you cut down your carbohydrates, that's another. And so for the short term, that sounds like it would be a great plan. But you might want to find something that looks a little bit more in balance for the long term. And I think you're going to, because of that right there, you'll burn out on that big time. You need something that's longer term that you can stick with. And you might want to talk to the dietitian that you're working with and say, Hey, look, I know you're probably only giving me bits and pieces at a time, but can you give me more of the long range plan? Are we going to stay on 50, 40, 50 carbohydrates forever? Or are we going to bump it up to a hundred, 150? 
where are we headed with all this? Because the carbohydrates, the, the type of carb matters. So if you're eating 50 carbohydrates, but you're getting it from bread or from pasta or from potatoes or whatever, you really want to get it from fruits and vegetables. And if you ate three big helpings of fruits and vegetables each day, you're probably going to get just barely over 100 grams of carbs. And it, it, even that's not going to be too much. That's not going to put a bunch of weight on you, especially if you're exercising. Exercising is a key. You just got to be consistent with it. A lot of people will either over-exercise or they'll exercise a little bit just a couple of days a week, and it's not really enough to stimulate what you need to as far as burning calories and and dropping body fat and the whole nine. So, I mean, it's it sounds like you're on a good game plan. Again, short-term, something radical like that, no big deal. I mean, you've seen the results. You dropped the weight. But you want to make sure that you can live a reasonably common sense life that is not just completely restrictive in every way. And then you can maintain the weight that you're dropping. There's nothing going to be more discouraging than if you go to 150 carbohydrates a day and start, but, but still eating well and you gain a bunch of weight back. It's like almost like it's false victory in this kind of thing, if that makes sense. So I'm a bigger fan of keeping things in balance along the way. So it might be something you want to consider and, and, and talk with your dietitian and your medical team about that. But make sure you're supplementing foundational four. That's important. There's some great research with conjugated linoleic acid, CLA. So it might be something you want to look into. And there's some other great research on L-arginine, citrulline, and a lot of the green tea polyphenols that are really, I mean, unbelievable for antioxidants. And then, of course, for the the different fat loss mechanisms that they have in them, along with your already good diet. So those are some things maybe you can poke around, do some research on. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. This is the best in healthy talk radio. Let's go now to Donald. Hi, Donald. Welcome to the show. Hi. Good to talk with you, man. You too. Uh, I listen to you every night, and uh, I told my my fiance. I said I want to try to talk to him, and I'm <laughs> I'm way over here, and I'm way down Georgia. Well, good man. It's great to talk with you. What can I do to help? Uh, I got some bone spurs in my neck and arthritis in my neck. I got arthritis in my in my joints, and I'm, I went to my rheumatologist, and he told me that that uh. They checked me for rheum- uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and I didn't have it. But the way I hurt all in my body, he told me I had to form the fibromyalgia. Okay. And so you want to uh, know? Or you just want to tell me? I tell you what, let's do this. Let me go into this commercial break, and then when we come out, we'll talk about arthritis. We'll talk about fibromyalgia. We'll talk about the difference between the two. We'll talk about the symptoms that you have, and let me kind of get a gauge on where things are going and then we can kind of compare the opinions of your physicians and then maybe come up with a game plan that can help in your situation. Don't go anywhere. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book, All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. Connect with On Call. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. This is the show where your health really is your greatest wealth. You can also check us out. Going to the break, talking with Donald. Donald's been dealing with several things, arthritis, and some of the doctors have said it might be fibromyalgia. So, Donald, let's talk about that for a minute. Now, I know you've had some pain in the neck area, the cervical area. Why don't you give me kind of a an overview and also tell me with your symptoms when you went into your doctor or doctors, both you know, any of the multiple opinions, kind of what they've told you and the direction that they've taken you and, and what kind of medications or or things they've suggested for you. Uh, 
okay? Uh, what they done was x-rays on my neck and found that I had bone spurs in my neck and arthritis in my neck. Okay. And uh, I went to a rheumatologist because she'd done, a, done some st- blood work, and she said it looked like just my family doctor. She said it looked like I had uh, some problems with might be uh, rheumatoid arthritis, so she sent me to a rheumatologist, and uh, he done x-rays on my hands. And he said, well, you ain't got and done blood work and said that I didn't have rheumatoid arthritis, but the way my muscles hurt and everything, he said I had the forms of fibromyalgia. Mm. And uh, more or less, I really want to know about the bone spurs in my neck. You want to know what they are or how to get rid of them? How to, how how can I get rid of them? Or... Are they going to tell you – did they tell you they want to do surgery? What do they tell you that they want to do? No, sir. They didn't uh, – my doctor didn't say nothing so far. I, I got to go back to third okay. and see what she said about it. But I was just wondering, if is there something you can take to get rid of them or – well, bone spurs occur for several reasons. There can be genetic factors. There can be lifestyle factors, meaning for whatever reason, your your bones in the neck area with your head, which weighs about eight pounds, leans forward a lot. It can create what's called a reverse cervical curve, which instead of having the nice curve that a, a neck is supposed to have in it to equally distribute the weight, it can have what's called a reverse curve or a military neck. And then, of course, the pressure of the eight-pound head kind of presses down every time you take a step. It can start compressing the disc, degenerating the disc in between the bones and can start causing some of the the spurs to form. The other theory about bone spurs is that we have a lot of calcium in our body. And the thing is, we may have a lot of calcium, but we – and there's a lot of calcium buildup. But the problem becomes that if you get the calcium buildup over a period of time – well, if if you don't have enough vitamin D, which vitamin D is kind of the, the one that absorbs everything. And if you don't have enough vitamin D, it won't absorb the calcium so your body can utilize it for all kinds of things, whether it's stronger bones or for hormones or whatever that vitamin D is being used for at that time. And so with low vitamin D levels, which has almost become a crisis with a lot of people in America today, then your body doesn't utilize it and it can form spurs and it can form the little rough spots on the bones. And, the, and so that can be another key to what might be going on in that as well. And it can cause a lot of pain. I mean, it can be very painful. But as far as the dietary things, as far as general arthritis, fibromyalgia, which is more inflammation of the tissues, the connective tissue, ligaments, tendons, and even just the, the, the skin itself can be painful with fibromyalgia. That really can be helped quite a bit by getting on an anti-inflammatory diet, a diet that's really low in the foods that would create inflammation and really high on the foods that would decrease inflammation in the body. Lean quality proteins, chicken, fish, beef, eggs, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and then the good healthy fats, omega-3s, 6s and 9s, almonds, walnuts, cashews, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot that you can do to lower inflammation in the body and cut down on a lot of arthritic symptoms, fibromyalgia, all that kind of stuff. So there's several things that you can can do to to handle that. And, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're working with your physicians, they're giving you their opinions, then you want to do your due diligence, and you can start working hard, like go in there and tell them that you'd like to have blood work done on your calcium levels and also looking at vitamin D. And they'll do the blood test for you. They won't have a hard time with that. And then you can see what those numbers are, see if you need vitamin D or calcium or decrease some of those or increase whatever you need to do. But it's about working together with them and then coming up with your own game plan for nutrition because most physicians are not going to work with you on your on your diet, nutrition, and all that. They're just not. Some may have dietitians. Some may have nutritionists that work with them. But at the end of the day, most of them won't. And they're, they're going to kind of guide you as far as medications and whatnot. They're going to tell you you need to eat a good diet, but they're not going to tell you what exactly that means. And so you're going to have to kind of come up with a game plan. I want to encourage you. There's a lot you can do. You can hire a nutritionist. You can, if you want, you can use my book, Empowering Your Health. It's at all the bookstores. You can use that as a, a reference just for some ideas and things that you might want to run by some of those folks. But changing the way you eat is so critical. Change the way you eat, you'll change the way you live. It's a real key. Now, there's supplements, too, that can help with joint pain. Manganese is really good 
and the the whole glucosamine thing it's it it's had some it's had some good points and some good research around it and it's had some really tough spots as far as research goes and I'm kind of mixed on it I've seen people that do well on it and seen people that really didn't do so well so you you kind of want to fill that out on your own if you're allergic to sulfur at all it is a sulfate based supplement and it might be something you want to be careful with sometimes people have reactions with those but I would definitely go get another opinion I would go get a, a DO or a DC that's a doctor of osteopathic medicine which is a DO or a doctor of chiropractic medicine is a DC might be good to consult with because if it is in the neck and it's not bad enough to have surgery there's a lot they can do to increase motion in the joints that might be helpful for your situation hope that helps puts another hour in the charts I'd like to thank our producer Leslie Pardue and the rest of the team I'm your health and lifestyle coach go tell one person something you learned on this show and together we can change the health of our friends our families in our communities. You're listening to the best in healthy talk radio where we're diagnosing hope one person at a time. Did you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the AsaRx audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.